Let's look at another example which will allow us to demonstrate the quality control parameters for motion blur in Mantra. And here I've got a, a long oblong object which is rotating like so. In fact, I'm going to rotate it by around a full 90 degrees per frame, so it's a really big rotation. And let's try rendering this with motion blur enabled. And this is an animation at the scene level, so we can just use the standard motion blur. And I have it enabled here on my mantra node. And let's render that at frame here and see what we get. Well, that's producing a nice blurred outline here. But it's not quite what we ex would expect because the rotating oblong ought to create a curved profile here at the edges. And what we're getting is straight. And the reason for that is that by default, Mantra is only looking at the beginning and the end of the frame when it's calculating motion, motion blur. We only taking, we're only taking two samples. If we increase this to, say, six samples and render again, let's see what we get. We're getting a very distinct image of the oblong with a very slight motion blur. Why is that happening? Well, the answer lies in the way we animated our object. And we've used a formula here, $f times 86. $f is the integer frame number. It's always an integer. So when Mantra seeks to evaluate subframes, the frame here, the animation in other words, is only valid for whole frame numbers and that's what's creating that effect. So it's one of the reasons why it's always better to use $FF in expressions of this kind, which is the floating point frame number. If we render that again, we see that we're getting what we expected, which is a nice curved profile to the motion blur. There are two other attributes that I should mention on the sampling tab here, which affect motion blur. One is the motion blur style. That's pretty straightforward. That determines whether the blur is in front of your object, behind it, or on each side of it unlikely you're going to need to change that. The motion factor parameter here controls the extent to which Mantra can economize on shading calculations for objects that are moving. If we had a shader here that was extremely detailed and time-consuming to calculate, it wouldn't be worth calculating it in as much detail since it's going to be so greatly blurred. The motion factor controls the extent to which Mantra economizes on shading calculations for objects that are moving very fast. You'll need to experiment with values greater than zero to get the right balance between the shading being accurate enough when blurred and the time saving. That brings us to the end of this brief introduction to motion blur in Mantra.